pretty good. Uh, that'd be so tough. I feel like like two hour weigh-ins. I feel like I'd lose a ton of strength or something. But because you, do you refuel after that? Like tons of hydration and so, sodium stuff like that. Yeah. So the trick is really to make sure that you get like so the last couple of days into the the weight cut, I actually get a caloric surplus, and that is done by changing the, the food intake that I'm using. So like Cliff bars, peanut peanut butter, nuts, chocolate, all that kind of stuff. That's very um, very uh, low volume, but actually has a ton of calories. That makes it super easy, and you can actually gain a little bit um, in, in terms of the caloric surplus, but also still lose weight um, at least those last couple of days. So that's typically what I do, and I'm usually great. So I, I think that when I so I have again coming from the background of 24 hour weigh-ins, you kind of do this like crash dieting type thing at the end of uh, of. 24 hour weigh-ins and weighing in, it it's usually doesn't go well, but because you have 24 hours, it's like, oh, it's fine. You just eat all you want the next day and everything it, versus obviously two hour weigh-ins. You cannot do that. There's no way that's going to work out well for you. Yeah, no, I, uh, I had some pretty extreme weight cuts, but you always knew you had that day to fuel up. And a lot of people take mm -hmm. advantage of that in the form of like IVs and stuff like that. So you can always gain it back. I actually never got the IVs. I kind of wish I did because that would have been much easier, but it's tough to like drink, you know, two gallons back and try to eat all day. And, um, but it's much, much better than like the two hour weigh-in, you know? So, so mm -hmm. do you, you probably, I don't know. You probably don't want to talk about number goals for IPF worlds. Cause you don't want to like tip off your competition, but I don't mind. I don't, I don't mind at all. It's not a big deal. I, I post my training and all that kind of stuff. So it's completely well, what, what are the, what are you thinking then? What are you, what are the goals? Um, so considering like the numbers that we're nominated with, so that 1930 total was like six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, something like that. Jeez, right. Um, so we, all the U S lifters have to compete again very quickly. So there's only so much that you're going to improve on your total. Um, but I think realistically, so I squatted 678 pretty easy at this last meet, I think around 700 for me at this meet is actually pretty doable. Um, and then benching closer to what I know I can do in training. Cause in training I've benched 452 and 441. Um, so like 441 multiple times, 452 is on a fat pad. So can't really even count that, but 441 multiple times in training, uh, I would like to do like 435, 430. And if I could do that versus what I did at nationals, having a really bad day, I only got 407, uh, that would be huge for the total. And, um, in training, the last couple of weeks before nationals, uh, I was looking to deadlift 850 something, 860. And I think I'll be closer to that mark if these the last couple of weeks go well. Um, but again, it's kind of one of those things where it's the head to head matchup. I just need to pull what I need to. And I think if I can pull around what I did at PLA nationals or powerlifting American nationals, I think 845, 850 is probably enough. So 1950 ish on the total. That'd be pretty ridiculous. If I, if I did those numbers, I think that would be a little bit more. I think it would almost be 2,000, but not quite. Let's see. Okay, wait, let me do the 430 math. 430 plus 700, 700 plus 850. Yeah, it'd be like 1980. Whoo! Yeah. You guys can tell I was never uh, great at math in school, but <laughs> gotcha. I have, I have a calculator. Yeah, well. no, it's all good. I just, off the top of my head, 1980 would be absolutely unreal. What was uh, Norris's total? I know he's like number one all the time. 2033? So Jesse, I don't know if you know this, that total that Jesse did was on pound plates at a local meet. Um, and it was like, it was a hundred percent pound plates. Um, yeah, we know he's that. done, you know, a lot. I, I would say the number to beat would be Ashton's total from, ah, oh, that was, wait, wait, what? The the Grand okay. Prix. So Jesse's meet was the SPF one on pound plates or no, wait. I it, I, no, it was a USAPL meet, but they use pound plates at it. And you can look at the numbers and you'll be like, why is it 0. 0.4 for this? They used pound plates at a USAPL meet, really? Yep. yep. I That's unheard of nowadays. If but... we're looking at, uh, let's see. I don't know. Um, uh, it's in USAPL Idaho. Oh, yeah, here it is. 750, 448, 25. 2015 yeah. is the total. Yeah. But it was done on pound plates, and if you know anything about pound yeah. plates with that kind of weight, it definitely makes a huge difference. But obviously, <clears throat> can't take anything away from you know obviously what Jesse's done. So it's still you know highly up there. 
but it, again, kind of going back to um, the travel stuff, man, like the travel is a huge thing where, you know, people are like, oh, I did this total at this meet. It's like, cool, do that when you have to fly 20 something hours to the other side of the world and compete head to head with every single other person at some foreign place. Like it's a whole different thing. What, well, what's the game plan as far as like how soon before the competition are you getting there? Uh, so I'm actually doing, um, I don't know if you've seen that gym that uh, Larry Wheels trains at in Dubai. Um, it's one of the gyms is Desert Barbell. Um, they're hosting me over there two weeks out uh, and I'm doing a couple seminars and workshops and some training. Uh, that'll be two weeks out. And then when I'm there for two weeks or that for one week, I will fly to Johannesburg from there. Uh, that'll be like a full week out because uh, I have some athletes to coach at Worlds and then also um, just trying to get acclimated to that and train there. Uh, so I'll be there for a week. I'll be completely transitioned over to the time zone because I think it's only an hour difference between Dubai and Johannesburg. So I'll be pretty set up, um, but it is still obviously flying across the world. Wow. Are you going to meet up with Larry Wheels? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. Is he is he still like into powerlifting stuff right now? I thought he was doing like some strongman or I don't well, know what he's, he's doing. He's kind of like retired from powerlifting, but he's going to go hard in the strongman. But I know he's in Dubai, so that's where he's oh, based yeah. out of. If He probably will be there during the time that I'm there, I would assume. Yeah, Yeah, you should hit him up because he. Yeah. you're very strong. And to be at a, you know, you could collab <laughs> on a video or something like that. So that'd be cool. Do you want to know something funny that kind of bothers me? <laughs> What's that? People, people do this and like, I, I know it's like, it's kind of funny, but it still does. I'm like, come on. And the king of the list will share like a post of mine or something. And then they'll be like, oh, Larry Wheels Jr. or something. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And then we do look we do look similar, but but I see it. And I also deadlift a lot. He does a lot, so it's fine. And then does does this uh does Wada <laughs> show up at your door with the drug test after those videos? <laughs> after the like oh, after Larry the Wheels Jr. <laughs> right. Uh, um yeah, that is one thing that we should talk about, right? The WADA testing and all that kind of stuff. Um I just, so the, go ahead well, one thing that's interesting no I, I made that joke because like larry wheels obviously on peds and if they're calling you larry wheels jr they're like all right this guy's suspicious we gotta go <laughs> check him out but right. didn't i i swear there was just a video from uh, bob matthews that's just jay bob didn't he just get drug tested at like his gym did he no, see that? I, don't, I don't know maybe I, I heard you say that i think in the last podcast but i, I don't know for sure I, I think i don't know if he got drug tested i, I gotta look into that video more but what the do they thing do? With, no, go ahead. Yeah. So with the drug testing situation, so like, I don't know if you know, there is like a full registered testing pool that a lot of the top USAPL lifters and IPF lifters, so we'll get into the sp split of that, but USAPL lifters have to monitor their whereabouts. So like if you're a top level USAPL lifter, you have to go into this, um, this form, you feel like, okay, hey, I train at my gym at this time and every day and you have to keep that time slot available or i train or i'm going to be at work at this time and you have to make sure you mark you know at least an hour spot for that so that that way they can come drug test you during whatever time at any point for any reason that's that's been the case for years and years and years typically um most people aren't going to be drug tested but it is still there um, there's some people that get drug tested, you know, five times a year, like out of me testing, like some people just don't ever get tested. Um, I have only been, I have, I've actually never been OMT'd, but I have been IMT'd when I just showed up to a meet. So if I was like handling for one of my lifters, uh. I would just show up and they'd be like, Hey, Chance, like, cool. I'm glad you're here. Let's actually get you to be drug tested. And I'd be like, cool. And then I just go back and that's actually people, some people, and I've heard other people, other top level lifters say that they call that an OMT. It's actually not an OMT. That's an IMT. Um, and OMT versus IMT are completely different. So for USAPL, um, they test for specific things in competition and for out of competition, um, they test for other, other things, right? Like, so in competition, it's usually just stimulants and um, actual anabolics, right? Okay. In comp, that's like really the only thing. So if you were doing whatever recreational drug, you're, it's probably not going to show up, okay? Mm -hmm. if, if you're off season, it actually will, um, but depending on what it is, um, there's only certain things that you will receive a suspension for. 
So for example, let's say for example, like in your in the off season, um, you get like an OMT and you are taking marijuana or something, right? Um, there used to be a rule where if if this is something that you would actually fail for outside of this test, like in another test, if like IMT or versus OMT, um, you would you would autom automatically be declined or disqualified from a national team or a world team. Um, that option or that um, that rule actually got changed, but it would show up. So there again, whole different thing. People sometimes miscommunicate or say that hey, I was actually OMT'd when they weren't, uh, and that's a whole different thing. They could get away with certain things where they couldn't if it was in comp. So OMT is that out of me out of me comp testing, and then mm -hmm. in me yep. testing is IMT. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, so that's what Sawyer Clatt and Sawyer Clatt's in the middle of freaking nowhere. Like he's literally on the Canadian border. <laughs> so he said he's never been out of competition tested. So, I, but I don't, I mean, I don't think the guy's on anything truthfully, yeah. but that's interesting. Now, 